So the other thing I want to ask you, again, uh, previously, of course, uh, I want you to remember, are we part of it? Are we looking at the issue? Are we getting together in a very professional, <laughs> not in the short term, because there's some money there in the longer term, in a more high level discussion as how are we going to shape this city? We're hearing today, that, uh, in these days, that Calgary is going to become a city of one point two trillion in the Where do you think, or do you, we know already, but where do people think these people are going to come from? They're going to come from about 150 different countries. And that is the reality. So how we prepare we are, those are the questions we have to ask. We're talking about expectation, and again, it's an academic discussion, but again, it's important to understand that there are different parties that they invest in immigration in Central Canada, but they also have different expectations. The newcomer's expectation. Their expectation is not the same as the policies for government of Canada or government of Alberta expectation. They have different expectations. As I said, in the skilled workers, we did it just this quick study. 85% of them, they actually leave a job, a good job to come to Canada. So the prime factor for coming, the push factor for them is not coming here and finding a job. The push factor is to come to Canada and start the life, a new life, for themselves and for their children. And they're investing quite a bit before they come, before they land, and they continue investing as we all do, till the day that a third generation leave this planet and the second generation to start uh, being part of it. So we have to understand that expectation. We have to recognize that we don't do that now. Government expectation of this government was two hundred thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars, and they want to resolve by end of the year, March thirty first. If you achieve it by June thirty first, it's really not of the activity. It has to be something more complex. So the process we have created, it is not only out of the understanding. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying we have to ask those questions. It is a process. We all know the benefits of process. Community has expectations. You have a city of books. So let me four thousand new comments go there. Community has to adjust to that. We have high river. We got six hundred temporary farm workers in only one uh, company, and three hundred of them are basically land, and they are being in the town. Just the whole composition of the community changes. These are the questions. How are we going to manage that? How are we going to manage the expectations? If, especially if they are not engaged. If they are engaged, it makes it like much easier. Then obviously you the expectations that the problem. The key to that is to collectively you create and define a level of reasonable expectations. So that element of celebration won't get lost. So the newcomers come to Canada. I have to acquire kid a job. Maybe it's not an engineering job, it's really not a good uh, bank position, but he not run the family. Let's give them credit for that. Let them make them really celebrate the achievement. And I think that is the key <coughs> that we can do a good job, especially within this community. Value the work that they do, regardless of how much they make. Because I know in some uh, level, they have to do that. I don't know if they put them up with the same thing. They go back and look at the income and how much tax people pay. It is important. There's no doubt about that. But we have to get beyond that. And I think that is something we have to really understand. How people come, how they integrate, then we value the achievement that they achieve, and not worry about that they are not on this bracket. Doesn't matter. Those brackets can decline later on, but let's give them the sense of achievement and celebration. <coughs> now, this is probably what I've seen as I talked to you. This is how we look at the line work and my colleagues and the other people that how we look at it. We look at the whole set of continuum of services in the re-innovation, we have to talk about that, I can tell you what we do. Initial settlement, and then we talk about settlement. That's what we heard that first uh, cousin who just mentioned, that that first impression is amazingly important. We met it in three to five years, but as a practitioner, I would say it really for six months. This is so crucial, that how people can set their mind you know, yes, this is the place I want to buy. This is the place I want to buy a house. This is the place my kids want to get married. That is so important that the situation. And then we go to the whole transition, and then obviously the participation. The way we look at it, the integration happens the time you land in Calgary Airport. The first conversation you have a taxi driver, this is part of the integration. 
So it's really not that magic thing that happens like that. It's a process. And we are, we think it's really more, it has to do with the mental uh, state of people. That's how they decide. And I'm sure that you are not a stranger to them. You myself, I think, every time uh, the five people, my wife, my mother, two kids, if you look at us, we all integrate the So we decide how to do it. You cannot tell people how to do it. You can help them to settle, but not integrate. Integration is a personal, very personal idea, and people uh, <coughs> make decisions to become uh, to set on an activity space. Very quickly, I think desire of practice. Number one. I think these are some of the elements of desire of practice. And I think if we go back to our offices, looking at our services we design, we provide, you see, are those elements in place? And if they are, obviously you have the element of desire of practice. I don't use the word best practice because it's not really defined what it is. Because the best practices, in a very diverse country we have. I was in Edmonton the other day, we were talking to some of the service providers. It's a whole different, different world. It's only 280,000 dollars. So it has to be low cost. It has to have the low cost element of success. <clears throat> what works? And I don't think we can do it in isolation. It has to work, has a comprehensive approach to making success. First, we start with policy. Canada is a democratic country. That's what I love that. And what policies are so important because they drive everything. So not only government policies, but also businesses policies, employees policies. Those are important. So what we have to do, make sure the policies that we create are friendly, are there to make immigrants become successful. Not to make sure that we are already getting it in some good deal, so we don't want to give them a better deal. No, we should give them a better deal, because they are part of what? They are us. They are here to stay. So let's give them a good deal on our policy to make sure that they achieve it in the order of the benefit. In each one we're looking, part of leadership is a hugely important. So we have to look at it. We all leadership in this role. So we have to maybe question the role we play and how we play that. Part of this, uh, the stakeholders are important. We have to talk about it. We have to get part of the fantastic, fantastic uh, best practices and desire practices. How we, we have to pay more attention to that. And everything we do has to be kind of Trans should be in the middle of it. I know it's hard because policy restriction, politic restriction, funding restriction is there, but we have to draw the issue. What works what, and what doesn't work? And this is what I want to be some questions, but we don't have that much discussion with you. We cannot institutionalize integration to the labor market. The biggest failure we have is to grow many good yet. Even government couldn't do that. It is the nature of it. It's not that they didn't want to work. It doesn't work. You can't go to the people and say, you have to find it. Especially in a country that 90% of your business is market-driven economy. In other countries that government owns everything, yes, you can institutionalize that. But in Canada, you cannot. At the end of the day, the company will get the area has to decide, and that person is he or her own boss and doesn't listen to anybody else. He or she has to make a decision. So that's very important. We cannot institutionalize that. Like and also important practices that does not exist in local communities. It happens quite a bit. I mean, I'm very in favor of learning from others, as the others learn from us. But it has to be designed based on local community needs and involvement. And we haven't done a good job with that. CCI Calgary has received more immigrants than any other country, but we never have sat collectively to say, what really works? Let's look at the numbers. The numbers are already there. What has to do? Let's invest them. What we have done, we have actually created a lot of programs. And what most of us shake, being a nonprofit organization in this city is not fun. <laughs> it's not really fun. It's a struggle. The day to day struggle, us doing an important job. When the money becomes available, the first question should be asked, how can we develop approaches to make more capacity within this sector? But we don't ask that question. We go and do things that maybe works. We don't know. But we know what has worked in this sector. So we have to work on that better. And that's a big question I'm asking people to ask yourself. There are a lot of things we have done. And also, you are ignoring the expectation of the incumbent. We are just, we are so contractual agreement uh, uh, connected and committed. So sometimes you even forget who we are doing it for. We are not doing our programming for the funders, we are doing it for our clients. And that is also another question I want to ask. 
are we doing a good job of focusing on the New York Times? Some of the practices that we have done, again, as I said, I'm sure other institutions have done, that's what I said, there are so many good practices in California. In 1994, an engineering operating program was established, still going. So these are good practices. There are a list of good practices, I'm not going to go through them. But I just want to make sure that we realize that there has been fantastic practice in California that was developed when there were no resources, when there were no money. And let's go back and examine to, and see how it works. I remember when we were developing an engineering operating program, I'll just give you that, it was quite an interesting memory for me. We tried to go in 1993 to ask people to allow us to uh, help the newcomers engineering to enter the labor market. We talked to 20 companies. Only three of them agreed when we talked to do work with us. At the hospital, the senior manager was an interesting guy. He said, you know, I don't like government funded program. That was not the idea. And I don't understand what you guys are talking about. However, then I was another lady that she was, uh, I believe, first I was helping her. She said, he said to me, and uh, Anna, he said, he said that actually, because you two are so excited, I just want to be part of this excitement. <laughs> and that was the reason the hospital senior manager actually agreed to help us with that. Now the program has about 300 employees in the pocket. Again, it is only one program. If you go to any program, family, and the CIVA, Center for Income and Family Services, Beach Foundation, those have actually already been built for many, many years. Collectively, we have two, about almost 2,000 Canadian actually volunteering for our, our program, helping newcomers. It's the highest rate in the country. So let's value them and let's, <coughs> let's uh, build on those successes. Now, I want to conclude on two things, again, I have not have been proud saying that. There are two things when people come here, and as most, a lot of us have been here, and I think uh, for a little bit of refugees, and I'm sure you, if you haven't experienced that yourself, it's a whole first, I mean, the universal feeling of how people interact with the environment. They have fears, and they have hopes. It's not about this time for this simple thing. You go for a vacation, you go for, you go for the old inclusive vacation in Puerto Rico, you have fear, then you have hope, right? <laughs> it's not really the only evidence or refugees that they have that. For us as a practitioner and an expert, we have to identify those fears and <coughs> and also build on their hopes. It's very simple. And also, collectively, we have to create a condition of success. That can, can they create a condition of success involves everybody in our community. You cannot have successful integration of newcomers, about 15,000 of them, in your city if you cannot, if they cannot afford to rent the piece of place. It is not only settlement, it is a housing, it is a police, it is the health, it is the whole community has to be involved to make the settlement integration work. The good news is, again, I haven't been here too long, I've been here only 23 years, but I have seen the changes. I'm very positive, extremely positive how things have evolved so far. Again, we have a big uh, challenge ahead of us, but let's, let's from the past. Let's put the uh, newcomers in the century and let's talk to each other. I should be better. Thank you.